<gasps> Harry Potter. Dobby, the house elf, made his first appearance in the Chamber of Secrets and instantly became one of the most loved characters in Harry Potter. Though he is initially trying to stop Harry from returning to Hogwarts, it soon becomes clear that Dobby cares deeply for Harry and is such a sweetheart. Following him throughout the books, we get to see him become a free elf finally and really become everything that he wanted. Dobby is free. Dobby was always there for Harry, protecting him and doing everything he could for him. And Dobby has come to save Harry Potter and his friends. This is what makes Dobby such a wonderful character. And you can tell that he would give everything for Harry. He showed that even a house elf can do incredible things. And his death was one of the most tragic parts of the series. In fact, we're still not sure anyone has fully recovered. How dare you defy your masters! Dobby has no master. The character of Dobby is a really complex one. Being a house elf, his portrayal in the movie would surely be a bit more complex than many others. I think that Dobby is a particularly challenging character just because you're creating a wholly digital character. Challenging on the part of the visual effects team and challenging on the part of Dan Radcliffe who had to act with a you know, an orange uh, ball Avengers, for most of for all the scenes uh, Dobby. with Dobby. And one of the most asked questions on the Harry Potter series is, how was Dobby made? So who were those behind the wonderful portrayals of Dobby? Well, in today's video, we will be looking at the character Dobby and how he was brought to life. Put the lamp down! Give me the lamp! Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets presents two different kinds of prejudice. One is anti-muggle-born bigotry, as when Draco Malfoy calls Hermione a mudblood. No one asked your opinion, you filthy little mudblood. The second prejudice that influences the plot of Chamber of Secrets is wizarding bigotry against magical creatures. Dobby is the first magical creature we've really gotten to know in the Harry Potter series. Dobby is suffering from terrible abuse at the hands of a dark family that he serves. <laughs> Still, Dobby has no means to free himself from the torment. The only way a house elf can be freed is if his master gives him a gift of clothes. And with a man as vicious as Lucius as his master, there was almost no possibility for Dobby to be free. Dobby wears his uniform of a ratty old tea towel while performing any and all household chores that the Malfoy asks of him. Because house elves are magically bound to the family into which they're born, Dobby can only be freed if his master presents him with the proper clothes. Many people have wondered who was behind the squeaky voice of the house elf. Harry Potter is known for its amazing cast, but one member that often gets overlooked is Dobby's voice actor. You can't see him directly on the screen, but Dobby's voice should be incredibly familiar. Toby Jones plays the role of Dobby, who you might recognize from Captain America, The Winter Soldier, where he plays Arnim Zola. He also has major roles in The Hunger Games and Sherlock. His voice definitely played a major part in making Dobby the lovable character that we all adore. <laughs> Dobby? I enjoy playing Dobby. That said, I never really take full credit for the character since it's a large part of its character comes from its movement, which I can only suggest and they can realize. But you don't think only one person will be able to fit the many roles of Dobby, do you? Well, if you thought so, you thought wrong. Because as we said, bringing the character of Dobby onto the big screen is no mean feat as it took multiple actors to accurately bring Dobby to life. The character was so complex that Diane Gibbons, a British actress, filled in the role of Dobby. Wait, did I just say actress? Yes, I was not wrong. Gibbons played the diminutive house elf alongside Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson in two of the Hollywood blockbusters. Despite the seven movies grossing more than 10 billion pounds worldwide, Diane was paid just 360 pounds a day and says many people don't believe she even starred along Daniel Radcliffe. A lot of time people don't believe me, said the 51-year-old, but Diane says the experience was still enjoyable and had a great time working with her co-stars. It was great fun, I enjoyed it and there was great camaraderie among the other actors, she said. I'm Dobby. It's on the moves, isn't it? Because he's a creature. But I'm better. Because I'm younger. He's the nicer one. Yeah, you're the horrible one. I'm the grumpy, old, he's miserable one, isn't geek. That's grumpy me. Old. One of Diane's prized possessions from her time on the set is a picture of her with Harry Potter actor Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, who played Ron Weasley, and Tom Felton, who plays Draco Malfoy. She also met Jason Isaacs, who played Lucius Malfoy, Ray Fiennes, who played the Dark Lord, Lord Voldemort, and Helena Bonham Carter. Bellatrix Lestrange, who the panto actor described as a lovely lady. Although she regrets not getting the chance to meet Michael Gambon, 
Sambon and Bill Nye, who also starred in the series, there was one fellow star she did not get along with. Diane said when I first started, Emma Watson, who played Hermione Granger, was really nice. But after about a week, she wouldn't say hi and just ignored us. That's not right. Just because she's the leading lady doesn't give her the right to be rude to people. As Diane's three feet and a quarter inch stature helped her portray popular elf Dobby, she was also used as one of 60 small actors to play goblins in the final showdown between Voldemort and Harry Potter, when house elves battled against the evil wizard. The actress had to wear masks and needed to shave her head to get some of the Dobby prosthetics on without pulling her hair out. When scenes were shot with green screen, Diane had to wear a bald cap in one of the franchise's most famous scenes when Dobby dies in the Deathly Hallows Part 1, which was shot on a beach in Wales. Diane actually fell into Daniel Radcliffe's arms and had to pretend to be dead. She also wore heavy prosthetics to portray one of the Goblin's bankers from Gringotts Wizarding Bank, alongside the head Goblin played by Warwick Davis. Due to the important role played by Goblins in the movie, a lot of short actors and actresses were needed, as many as 60 were included in the movie. You may be wondering, where did they find so many people of such stature? Well, Professor Flitwick came in handy. This small-statured actor runs the Willow Management Company, a management company for specially short and in some cases very tall performers. I've had to supply some people today to, uh, to kind of be doubles stroke stand-ins for Dobby and Creature. If you can have another actor on set to interact with, I mean, it, it helps your performance no end. And, you know, hopefully when the audience sits down to watch the film, it will be a seamless character interacting with the actors and prove to be very realistic. Dobby is one of the many characters to leave a lasting impact on the fans. His death was especially heartbreaking as one of the most impactful moments of the entire seven-part story. Dobby has a stature at Warner Brothers Studios that is incredibly lifelike, and visiting fans have been moved to leave a tribute. Visitors have begun leaving socks at the statue, which Dobby would absolutely love. Some fans go as far to take the socks off their own feet to leave them in remembrance. When Harry first meets Dobby, the house elf's first words are, Harry Potter. When he is dying in the books and movie, the last words he manages to get out are, that means the first and last words that Dobby said is Harry Potter. This shows how much Dobby cared for the boy who lived. What do you think about the character? Do you think the portrayal of Dobby in the movies is better than the books or otherwise? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.